Hello and welcome to another ASC production video. Today I wanted to follow up on the Legion Y740. Now, I had a lot of people ask me questions on the subreddit. Awesome, thank you. I'll do my best to answer some of those questions you have in this video. So, I've had a little bit of time to spend with the laptop, had a couple weeks with it, uh, and some of my initial impressions have changed now that I've been using it. Some for the better, some not for the better. But the first thing that we're going to do is go over size comparison. I initially compared it with my 25th anniversary ThinkPad. Do that again. But a lot of people felt like that wasn't a very good comparison, which I accept probably isn't good. Not a lot of you have 25th anniversary ThinkPad. So, first thing I'm going to do, here's a potato. Here's a Pokemon, specifically Squirtle. Here is a ukulele. And most importantly, I raided my kid's toy cupboard and found one of those old uh, dial phones that you have to, the rotary dial phones that uh, I used to play with as a little kid. So I figured that'd be a good comparison as well. Alright, so the next thing that people wanted me to talk about was the keyboard, specifically how I felt about it. Initially, my impressions weren't great. And the problem with that is it's not a bad keyboard. In fact, it's actually a pretty good keyboard. Unfortunately, Lenovo makes some great keyboards, and I happen to have a laptop with a great keyboard I have. As I said, my 25th anniversary. I also have recently had a T520, a T420. Uh, I have my X250. I've had a T450. I've had a T460. And uh, so I've had a lot of Lenovo laptops. Even my IdeaPad 120S has an excellent keyboard for a $150 laptop. That's what it cost when it was brand new. And so coming to this and having a OK keyboard is uh, a little annoying because I know they can do better. So it's kind of like, I don't know, if you bought a, a Mercedes that had the build quality of a, a modern day Mitsubishi. You know, just kind of slapped together, not real great. Sorry any for anybody who likes Mitsubishi. They haven't made good cars in a while. Anyways, so it just, it's not a bad keyboard. It just, I know they've done better. And I know they can do better. And some of the key placements on this are kind of weird. Like the numpad, I have not been able to get used to. Uh, the directional keys are nice full-size keys, which you don't get a lot on some of these laptops. But the numpad, what that means is it's pushed up. You're missing some buttons above it. You're missing an enter key. And you have to use it over the, uh, the directional buttons. So I end up pushing these by accident instead of the number pad. So it's just kind of weird things like that. Uh, there are no macro keys that I'm aware of. Obviously there's no specific dedicated macro keys like I've, I've seen on some other keyboards. So nothing to, to do there. Uh, now as far as the backlighting, there are two options for backlighting. You can use the Lenovo standard backlighting options which is using the function key and hitting the space bar, which your option is off, on, on, and then where it's kind of this raindrop effect where as you type, and I, this is my favorite, and then of course you can increase and decrease the keyboard brightness. But this is my favorite, so as you're typing, you get an, that nice effect of that kind of drops of water uh, radiating out from whatever key you pressed. I think it's fun. Uh, it does have the Corsair utility, so I was wrong. When I first looked at it, it did, I didn't think there was any additional software installed. That was a mistake on my part. There is the Lenovo Advantage application and the Corsair utility for the keyboard. And there just isn't a lot of options within the Corsair, the IQ is what it's called. 
there's just not a lot of options in the IQ that I could find that made the keyboard do many different things. It kind of seems like it all, either I could have a static color or I could have it be color reflective as far as the temperature that the system is running at, like the CPU, or it could just be rainbow spirals. Is kind of what it uh, was doing. Let's see here. So I prefer it without the IQ. I just like that drop effect for the backlighting. Now, depending on which option you pick for the uh, keyboard, uh, if you do just the standard Lenovo without the IQ, the icon on the back of the laptop as well as the vents on the sides just go through uh, rainbow colors and then oh, wrong button. Uh, so these just are rainbow colors here on the sides and on the back as well if you use the I IQ then it depends on whatever you pick for the keyboard colors is it um, can do the back or the vents or in the back, and then you can set a specific color for the back and the vents as well, separate from the keyboard itself. So that is the keyboard. It it's okay. I mean, it actually has a pretty decent feel. Uh, it's pretty quiet. My only other real complaint of the keyboard is not the keyboard itself, but with the wrist rest. This space here is just far too tall. And so when I'm playing games, my wrist hits it at a poor angle. Most laptops hit me right at where my rest, my wrist bends on the rest here. Uh, but obviously, my fingers are too short and stubby <laughs> to reach. And so I can't comfortably uh, uh, press the button. So I have to slide my, my arm up, and then it uh, gives me a weird pressure point here on my wrist. So uh, I would have to have some sort of bumper to make that more comfortable or completely change my typing styles, which I probably should because I have terrible ergonomics. <laughs> so uh, let's uh, move on. All right, the next question was uh, pertaining to backlight bleed. This is how it looks for me. Obviously, it's emphasized with the camera. Have a, uh, see my finger here, you have a little bit of a spot here, down here in this corner. You have a spot here and a couple spots here along the side here. But it's not bad. I've seen way worse on other laptops. In fact, let me bring up another laptop and we'll see what it looks like. I'll grab my 25th anniversary. And just as a comparison, we have the uh, Y740 behind and the 25th anniversary here in front. Oh, come on, focus. And you can see, just as a comparison, uh, the 25th anniversary looks like it has more bleed from the bottom two corners, a little bit from the top right, and the y 40 kind of has a few different places where it bleeds from, mainly the bottom left corner. But honestly, to the naked eye, this is really hard to tell uh, where the that is. Um, it's actually really good. Uh, to my eye, obviously, the camera emphasizes the bleed. Uh, a little bit more. Alright, so the next thing that I want to talk about is noise. Uh, I had somebody ask me about coil whine. I have not heard any coil whine from this machine at all. It's not something I've run across in any, hardly any laptops at all, you know, especially modern ones. So I don't hear anything on this and I do have tinnitus and typically if something has a high-pitched whine I hear it very clearly and it drives me absolutely insane. So no coil wine that I'm aware of on this laptop. Not saying that none of them will have it, but my specific unit does not have it. Now as far as fan noise, uh, the fan on this does get pretty darn loud. In fact, I have Ida 64 up. and We'll just do a quick stress test to get that going here. And you hear the fans spin up here in a few moments. It does stay pretty quiet until it does need the fans spinning up. So they are loud-ish, 
but they're not annoying. So my work computer is a Latitude 7390, which has a 4-core core, core i5 processor. And its fan isn't as loud per se, but the pitch at which it, uh, the noise that's coming off of it is incredibly annoying. It sounds like I'm sitting next to a jet engine, where the fans on the Y740 have a much better pitch or tone to them. And I don't find them at all obtrusive. Uh, they remind me more of like a, a white noise, a background white noise machine than they do an annoying fan on a computer. So whoever tuned the fans on the Y740 did an excellent job because out of necessity, uh, we're looking at these temps right now. We have one core at 94, another one at 93, one at 88, so the temps are pretty pretty up there, and it is thermal throttling a bit. But you know, this is a th synthetic benchmark, and it's it's not an annoying noise. You know, it's doing its best to keep the temps down, but it's not breaking your eardrums doing so. I've had way more annoying laptops to have to sit next to, my work one included. So, props to whoever has had to tune the fans on the uh, Y740. They did an excellent job of making it uh, what well, is going going to be a loud computer bearable to be next to in the same room. That being said, it puts off a lot of heat and a lot of hot air comes out of this laptop. So, um, something to keep in mind. It does run hot uh, on the CPU when you're pushing it. But, you know, you're paying for a very powerful machine and you're going to have to deal with some of those uh, trade-offs. Alright, so one of the next questions I was asked was productivity. So, I'll be honest, I'm not quite sure why you would buy a gaming laptop per se for productivity, uh, but being that this is a top spec uh, system, I mean, it's going to be great for productivity. Uh, on the right is the screen for my desktop uh, where I'm rocking a Ryzen 5 1400 that I bought two and a half years ago, or almost, well, right about two years ago. Um, and on the left is the Y740. So we're going to run Cinebench 15, R15, and we're going to do first the OpenGL. So yeah, I mean, <clears throat> look at that score. An OpenGL, that's 120 frames per second versus 84. I'm rocking a GTX uh, 1060 6 gig. And so let's go ahead and do the CPU test. And as you can tell, the Y740 isn't even really... Oh, there come on the fans. So it's halfway through before you even start kicking on the fans. And it's done. A score of uh, 1157, which is just, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's its only on the scores there on the left-hand side, it's on par with uh, a bunch of other stuff. <laughs> like, uh, there's a 12-core, 24-thread Intel Xeon that beat it out on the scores there on the left-hand side. And there's my Ryzen done at uh, almost half the score. So yeah, if you're doing productivity, this 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 machine's going to be a beast for it. It's obviously it, it has, it's extremely highly specced, and so yeah, it's going to be excellent at performing multimedia tasks, uh, video editing, gaming, rendering, AutoCAD. You know, just about anything you throw at the system, obviously it's going to be able to to just eat it up because it it is so fast. All right, one of the next questions I was asked was sound quality with headphones, which kind of made me laugh a little bit. Uh, these are my headphones. 
There are a pair of Logitechs. There we go, focus. Let's see, is there even a model number on these? Just a, there's just a USB headset. I've had these for five or six years now, and I only use them because I have them. Like, somebody gave these to me, and I've just never gone out and got some better. So, these are not very good quality, and so they sound terrible. So, sound quality using headphones is terrible for me because I have terrible headphones. So, <laughs> sound quality, uh, so sound quality with headphones really depends on the headphones you have. Let me turn that volume down. But sound quality overall is very excellent on this machine. It has two very nice big speakers. They fire out the sides of the, oh, let's point this down here. They fire out the side of the keyboard here, so they're not downward facing, they're firing out, which gives you a nice stereo effect. And there is a bigger speaker underneath that is called a subwoofer, which kind of makes me laugh because it is anything but. Uh, the tweeters in my car stereo are bigger <laughs> in size. Um, I don't know how much punch it actually gives to the sound overall, but it is there, it does exist. It is an actual speaker and sound does come out of it. So, just not quite sure how big of an effect that that single speaker has on the sound so I'm sure it has something otherwise they wouldn't put it in there I'd assume as far as frames I went ahead in the NVIDIA control panel I enabled the frames to be up here in the left hand corner and you see just in the window for PUBG uh, you get 97 ish frames a second in actual gameplay I get between 80 and 120 frames per second uh, I did win it, go ahead and embarrass myself in the PUBG's match earlier and that's about what I got. <laughs> I'm terrible at PUBG. I haven't played in months. Uh, really, people, other people are pretty darn good. I usually don't last very long in a match once I come across somebody. Uh, go ahead and close out of that. And uh, I have GTA 5 here. I, I like GTA 5. I've played it a bit, but I really am not any good at it. So I'm not actually going to play any on screen for you. Uh, don't need to embarrass myself even more. This is one thing that keeps coming up. The trackpad randomly disables. I don't know what it causes that. So frequently if I've let the computer go to sleep, I close the lid and it goes to sleep and then open the lid, the trackpad will be disabled. So I'm not quite sure what affects that. So that, that is one thing with the trackpad I'm not a huge fan of. You see the colors along the bottom of the screen. And this is my first monitor on any system that has had G-Sync, and I always thought it was kind of a bit of a gimmick, but it definitely makes a difference. Like, I can tell. So, I noticed in GTA 5, I get about the 60 to 70 frames per second range, and you hear the fans are going. They're not too loud. I turn the sound down on the um, music a bit, if I have that at a normalish listening uh, mode, oh, and I'm getting 140 frames, 142 frames a second, just sitting in my house. So <clears throat> if I turn the volume up on the speakers a little bit more, you can almost just barely hear the fans. They're not really that noticeable. So I won't play for very long. Anyways, I'll go ahead and close out of this before I embarrass myself. And somebody asked specifically about the uh, RTX performance. I mean, what can I say? It's the highest end graphics card you can buy in a laptop right now, a 2080 Max-Q. Can, can you get a better graphics card? Not that I'm aware of. So for any, any gaming you do on this should be excellent uh, as far as I'm aware. So, uh, if you have any, any other questions, hopefully I've answered all the questions I've been asked so far. If you have any other questions, feel free to ask in the comment section down below. I'll also start a new thread on Reddit with this video. And uh, anyways, thank you for watching, and I hope you have an amazing day.